Hi, and welcome to our video for chapter 13, sections 1 and 2. I'm going to kind of lump together gases and liquids just because there's not a whole heck of a lot about each in and of themselves that we're going to have to know. So first we're going to talk about the nature of gases. And the important thing to remember about gases has to do with what's called kinetic theory. It's also going to be referred to as KMT, which stands for kinetic molecular theory. And here's what that states, that gases contain particles that are in constant, random, straight line motion. So let's say here's a container, right? Okay, and then the gases are made up of molecules or atoms, and all of these are moving. And they move in a straight line until they hit something, whether it's the surface of their container or each other, okay? And they each particle is moving in whatever direction it's moving. It's not like they're all moving in the same direction, but they're constantly moving, and they move in a straight line until they crash into something. Okay, so we're gonna assume that the gas particle collisions are perfectly elastic. That means that for the way we're going to treat them, right, is that they don't lose energy when they crash. So if one collides into another, they each will bounce back in the opposite direction at the same speed that they were moving before. Okay. Now, in a container, the gas particles are very, very far apart. All right. So while we talk about the volume of the container, we're not that concerned with the volume of the actual gas particles themselves. Right? Like when we talk about a liquid, we have the container and here's the liquid, and we talk about the actual volume of the liquid, which is all the molecules together. When we deal with a gas, we're only talking about the volume of the container. We're not concerned with the actual, if we take up all those little particles and add up their volumes, it's so small that it doesn't really affect anything. So we're only really concerned with the volume of the container. And the other thing we're going to assume with the KMT is that the gas particles do not attract each other. Okay, so it's not like two gas particles moving near each other are going to slowly move towards each other because of attraction. They're just going to keep on moving in a straight line. Okay, next part of gases we have to think of is gas pressure. Now this gas pressure is the result of collisions of the gas particle with the wall of their container. So as the gas particles hit the wall, as they're moving, that each time they hit, they're pushing on the container. Right? If you've ever taken the time to blow up a balloon, you can feel as you go to squeeze the balloon, the balloon is pushing back. And it's not the balloon itself that's pushing back, it's actually the pressure of all of these gas particles hitting the walls of the balloon. Okay? So those collisions is what leads to gas pressure. And the more particles there are, the more pressure on the container. All right, now, next is liquids. There's a couple of important things about liquids we're going to have to uh, remember. One, evaporation. One of my little pet peeves is uh, students, and not only students, even uh, books, websites, and whatnot, will tend to misuse the term evaporation. Because well, anytime, usually what people say, anytime a liquid is changing into a gas, people will call it evaporation. And eh, not quite. The conversion of liquid to gas or vapor is vaporization. Okay? Because it's becoming a vapor. Evaporation is a very special kind of vaporization. It takes place at the surface of the liquid. So here's a liquid, right? At the surface, these what was liquid becoming a gas, that's evaporation. Okay, and what happens is in the liquid, just like in a gas, but a little bit less so, the molecules are moving, right? They're moving past each other. And every now and then, it'll gain just enough energy to escape and become a gas. 
all right? That particular kind of vaporization is evaporation. So some molecules in the liquid have enough kinetic energy to escape the liquid phase and enter the gas phase. Okay. Next, and that's going to kind of lead to vapor pressure, which is the pressure that a vapor exists over the surface of a liquid. So as these molecules are escaping, or particles, as they're escaping, it's going to create what's called a vapor pressure, how much pressure that vapor exerts over the surface of a liquid. And in general, the higher the temperature, right, as the temperature goes up, the vapor pressure also goes up. Okay, the higher the temperature, the higher the vapor pressure. Now the boiling point is the temperature where the vapor pressure is equal to the atmospheric pressure. Okay, the higher the atmospheric pressure, so pretty much the lower you are, closer to sea level, the higher the boiling point will be. For example, water generally has a boiling point of 100 degrees Celsius. If you get lower, right, if you get a, or under higher atmospheric pressure, that can actually go up. If there's lower atmospheric pressure, you know, like you go high up on a mountain, then the boiling point will get lower. If you look on a lot of time packaging instructions for boiling pasta or whatnot actually has instructions for using at a higher altitude where let's say we have to boil something for 10 minutes where we live somebody living in Denver which is much higher altitude is gonna have to boil it for 11 or more why because instead of the water boiling at 100 degrees Celsius it might boil at 99 or 98 degrees Celsius and since it's not as hot they have to cook it a little bit longer now the vapor pressure is going to be on reference table H. All right, so let's uh, take a quick look at that. All right, so let's take a look at table H. So here we can see all right, the x-axis has temperature, the y-axis has vapor pressure, and we can see corresponding vapor pressure versus temperature for propanone, ethanol, water, and ethanoic acid and we can see that at pretty much any given temperature so let's take 75 degrees Celsius propanone has a higher vapor, has the highest vapor pressure of these four ethanoic acid has the lowest and water and ethanol are in between now if we look right here 101.3 kilopascals we're going to be talking more about pressure when we do gases but that's the equivalent of one atmosphere one ATM of pressure, right? And we talk about STP, standard temperature and pressure. The standard pressure is one atmosphere. Okay, so what we can see here is water. We know that the boiling point of water, BP, is equal to 100 degrees Celsius. So at that point where we have the one atmosphere of pressure, that's right at 100, I'm sorry, that's right at 100 degrees Celsius. Okay, so the boiling point is where the temperature, where this line crosses the curve. So what's the boiling point for ethanol? We can just take this point here, and we're looking at 7500, so 75, 80, 85, 90, 95, 100, so this is 80 degrees Celsius. What is the boiling point of ethanoic acid? We're looking at 105, 110, 115, eh, somewhere around eight, 118 degrees Celsius, et cetera, et cetera. Pretty much uh, questions you'll be asked on the regions dealing with vapor pressure is just going to be simple graph interpretation just like that. We'll at uh, 50 degrees Celsius, what is the vapor pressure of propanone? You'll find 50, trace it up go over and and find say it's going to be about 60 70 80 yeah, about 82 kilopascals okay or vice versa at what temperature does ethanol have a vapor pressure of 150 kilopascals 
find 150, trace it over, bring it down, and we'll say at about 90 degrees Celsius. All right, that brings us to the end of our introduction to gases and liquids. Uh, as always, if you have any questions or problems, make sure you write down the questions so you can ask them in class or you can back up the video and watch stuff again. All right, see you guys in school.